Hey guys, Ash here from C40 Tech and today I've got with me the first phone to sport Qualcomm's all new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 SoC. Now this is the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. In today's video, let's quickly unbox and see what it is that Vivo has to offer with its latest flagship. Now before we proceed, a quick request, if you're on Telegram, use the link in the description to join the C40 Tech channel so that you can keep track of all my new uploads. So guys, this here is the X90 Pro Plus's box. It has a fall leather kind of finish to it, much like the phone itself, which we will talk about in a bit. Opening up the box, the first thing you see is the X90 Pro Plus. Let's remove it from that protective wrapping. Now this is the back finish that I was talking about. I really like the red, but if it's a little too in your face for you, Vivo does also offer this phone in black. Anyways, we then have a quick start guide, which is followed by a hard case. This pack, it's once again similar, it's got a similar texture. This is something Vivo's been doing for a while now and it kind of makes sense to me to retain that design with the case too. I like that attention to detail shown. Now, moving on, we then have a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, a SIM ejector tool, and finally, an 80 watt Vivo flash charger. Now this phone, it has a 4700 milliamp hour battery on it and Vivo claims you can get from zero to 100 in about 30 minutes. Of course, we have been seeing much faster charging these days, but guys, to be honest, I don't have any real complaints here, especially given they even have support for wireless charging at up to 50 watts. Now remember, the battery capacity is 4700 milliamp hour, so it's not super high capacity or anything, but this phone, it's still pretty hefty at 221 grams. In fact, it's a little heavier and even a little over half a millimeter thicker than its predecessor. The finish to this back though, it does make it easy to grip, easy to hold. Now that's not something you see a lot on phones these days, especially with flagships. Now the X90 Pro Plus also retains IP68 water and dust resistance of its predecessor while skipping out on the headphone jack and micro SD as expected. Now before we continue on to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 SoC, a quick shout out to our video sponsor. Gigabyte's G5 is a gaming focused laptop powered by Nvidia's RTX 30 series GPUs. The powerful graphics alongside Gigabyte's WinForce cooling system on a 15.6 inch display with a 144Hz refresh, it makes for an excellent gaming experience. The backlit keyboard and trackpad are also great and DDSX Ultra support is just icing on the cake. Despite the display being 15.6 inches, the overall form factor, it remains comparable to laptops with smaller displays, it's quite portable. Gigabyte also offers a host of storage options. The G5 comes with not one, but two M.2 slots. And additionally, there's even a two and a half inch swappable bay. So if you wanna throw in an inexpensive high capacity hard disk, just so you get to have a lot of games installed or maintain a huge media file catalog, well, this could be useful. To know more about the Gigabyte G5, check out the link in the description below. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is the first phone with Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. This chip, it's expected to be roughly 40% more efficient whilst bringing a 25% increase with CPU performance and a 35% increase with GPU. Now, benchmark numbers seem to roughly indicate that. As you can see here, with a 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test, the X90 Pro Plus does about 44% better than the X80 Pro, which has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Vivo's cooling, it's typically been a strong point and they've actually improved upon it this time. The X90 Pro Plus has a 8900 square millimeter large vapor chamber area. With the CPU throttle test, this phone retained 86% of its peak performance despite being pushed for 15 minutes straight. And even with that wildlife extreme stress test, if you notice the stability score was at 98%, meaning between runs one and 20, you know, that's about 20 plus minutes of the GPU being pushed, the variance was just under 2% which is commendable. Now, I did try out a few games on this phone and I have to say, as of today, this seems to be the best gaming experience available on Android smartphones. It's pretty awesome given this isn't even intended to be a gaming phone. Now, it's not just the chip that's been upgraded, the RAM and storage have been too. This year's Vivo flagship comes with 12 gigs of RAM right on the base variant. And this is the faster LPDDR5X variety. With that, you get 256 or 512 gigs of UFS 4.0 storage. The display has also been refreshed. This is still a 6.78 inch panel. It's an E6 AMOLED with a Quad HD plus resolution, making for a pixel density over 500 pixels per inch. The refresh rate is 120 Hz and it utilizes LTPO 4.0 technology to vary the refresh as required in order to be more efficient. It also happens to be a very bright panel capable of hitting a peak of 1800 nits for HDR. And yeah, there is support for both HDR10 plus as well as Dolby Vision. So 
this phone it should be excellent for media consumption we will also continues to provide support for stereo speakers and the output well here have a listen Now underneath this display is a large ultrasonic fingerprint reader and this is better than your regular optical scanners. Now for starters it can register fingerprints with just a single press. It also happens to be much faster and more accurate. Also the surface area being much larger is more convenient. Now the X90 Pro Plus it can also do regular 2D face unlock using that 32 megapixel selfie camera. The selfies themselves they turned out rich detailed with good dynamic range. I was particularly impressed with how Vivo's handled the skin tones here. Now to the back we have a quad camera array. All four sensors are useful which is good. Uh we first have the Sony IMX989 the same one inch sensor that we saw earlier on the Xiaomi 12s Ultra. It's paired with an f1.75 lens with optical stabilization and it seems to do a great job with the images. If you want to see a camera comparison with some other phone do let me know in the comments below. Now my initial impressions well consider me impressed. The performance I mean the dynamic range the detail the way the images popped there's a lot of promise here. Now do note that though this is a 50 megapixel sensor like with most implementations it shoots 12.5 megapixels by default. Next up there is yet another 50 megapixel sensor the Sony IMX758. This one comes with a fixed focus lens and that's because it's expected to be used for portrait shots like this. Now to boost that background blur naturally this sensor it's paired with the f1.6 lens which also happens to be optically stabilized. Now the next one is for your regular telephotos a 64 megapixel sensor capable of 3 and a half x zoom. So this lens here is a 90 mm equivalent with an f3.5 aperture once again optically stabilized. Then finally the fourth sensor it's a 48 megapixel ultra wide the field of view is nothing crazy it's just 114 degrees but it is free of distortion. Now one thing I really liked with this setup is how the colors are similar across the different sensors we was kind of maintain that uniformity and that is something I always appreciate. As for video you can shoot it up to 8K 30 fps and the resulting footage very detailed very stable good colors nothing to complain about. Now moving on to software we have Android 13 out of the box and this year's Origin OS 3 which is one of the more popular Android interfaces though it's been pretty much China exclusive so far given the competent software and top of the line flagship internals it wasn't surprising that the X90 Pro Plus felt buttery smooth to use it just flew through the interface there are quite a few tweaks that Vivo's added here especially noticeable are their gaming enhancements this toolbar allows for a lot of control right from when you're in a game Also awesome is what Vivo's done with the camera software. As evident by the branding on the box, there's some Zeiss influence at play. When you shoot images with a primary, you can turn the Zeiss natural color on or off. When left on, the resulting images they have more natural colors. What you've been seeing so far in this video, that's the option that is on by default, which gives you that perfect social media friendly pop. But if you wanted something more natural, well that's where Zeiss color comes in. So guys overall Vivo seems to have put together a pretty impressive smartphone in the X90 Pro Plus. Right from that back design that makes it look unique whilst also being functional as an adding to the grip to the case that continues to show off said design to the leather-esque pattern on the box there's a lot of attention to fine detail showed here. And it's not just with the presentation of the looks cuz they've gone all out with the latest everything on the inside too right from the largest sensor to the newest flagship chip the fastest ram fastest storage the X90 Pro Plus it does seem to pack it all. And the pricing for what it is isn't really all that crazy the X90 Pro Plus starts at 6499 RMB that converts to about 77000 rupees or 930 US dollars and as with most Vivo phones it's launched in China first and as of making this video is only available there but do expect a global rollout to follow follow soon so anyways that's pretty much it for my quick quick little unboxing and hands on with Vivo's latest flagship the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 toting X90 Pro Plus what do you think about this phone love it hate it think Vivo should have done something different let me know in the comments below Also thumbs up thumbs down based on whatever you felt about the video subscribe if you haven't yet if you're already subscribed turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon thanks for your time thanks for watching until next time my name is Ash you've been watching C4E Tech and I'm signing off for now you guys have a great day bye bye